Good morning and welcome to our online service on this the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Well, I can't believe it's September already. Where has the year gone? I hope you've all had a lovely break, a good summer break, and that you all were well rested and looking forward to the rest of the year. We start our service this morning with a wonderful hymn, Great is Your Faithfulness. Thank you to the St. Martin's Voices for that wonderful, wonderful hymn, Great is Your Faithfulness. And as always, when we look back and think back on where God has brought us from, we cannot but marvel at the faithfulness of God. Our God is truly a faithful God. Now it's time for our opening prayer. Time for us to, as always, hand over the reins of this service to God and let him direct our affairs as he sees fit this morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, we 
praise you, we honor you, and we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, for the wonderful ways in which you keep us, you love us, and you care for us. Father Almighty, as we have enjoyed a summer break and as we come back to the rest of the year, to the rest of the work that lies ahead, we commit ourselves into your hands. We commit ourselves, O oh Lord God, anew to your faithfulness. You are indeed very faithful. And we commit ourselves and this service to you. And we ask, Lord God, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you inspire us as we worship you this morning. And Lord Almighty, in all that we do this day, let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now it's time for our readings. And as always, we have two readings. The first reading is from James, uh, James Epistle, chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. And the second reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 24 to the end. Jessica Morell will read both readings. And in between the two readings, Andy and Polly will sing Salvation's song. The first reading is from James, chapter 2 beginning at verse 1. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favouritism, rarely believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you rarely fulfil the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Love 
before the dawn of time Chosen by my maker, hidden in my savior I am his and he is mine Cherished for eternity When I'm stained with guilt and sin he is there to lift me, heal me and forgive me, gives me strength to stand again, stronger than I was before. So with every breath that I am given, I will sing salvation song, and I'll join the of creation giving praise to Christ alone all the claims of Satan's curse lifted through his offering satisfied through suffering all the blessings he deserves put on my unworthy soul so with every breath that I am given, I will sing salvation song. And I'll join the chorus of creation, giving praise to Christ alone. Singing glory, honor, wisdom, power, to the Lamb upon the throne Hallelujah I will lift him high Singing glory, honor, wisdom, power To the Lamb upon the throne salvation song and I'll join the chorus of creation giving praise to Christ alone stars will fade and mountains fall Christ will shine forever love's unfailing splendor earth and heaven will bow Joining in salvation song Earth and heaven will bow in awe Joining in salvation song The Gospel is from the Book of Mark, Chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon 
towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him to a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven, sighed, and said to him, F. Fartha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Jessica, for those readings. May the words of my mouth, O Lord, be spirit and life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Who belongs in the kingdom of God? Who belongs in the kingdom of God? This is a question that many of us often ask ourselves if we think, if we engage with the Bible we will find a whole um, range of individuals in the Bible. So we begin to ask ourselves, who belongs in the kingdom? It's a kingdom for Jewish people who are the original um, people of the Bible. Or is it a much broader, much wider group or of people and that is the challenge for a lot of us where we look at nowadays does the big kingdom of God belong to just us who are followers and when I say when I say us who are this us people like us maybe who belongs in the kingdom of God our reading today seeks to explain to us, to answer this question. And it's an encounter that Jesus Christ has with a non-Jewish woman, a Gentile woman, a woman who was Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia, a woman who came to Jesus Christ with a burden. Her burden was her child, a daughter was demon-possessed. So she came as a parent, as a loving mother to Christ, seeking his help. Like I said, she was not a Jew. She was a Gentile. And she knew that that she would have known that there was a distinction, a separation, if you will, that existed between the Jewish people and the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles. And yet she seeks to bridge this divide out of desperation. She knows that she's heard, if you will, that Jesus Christ is a great healer. She just Christ has great powers. And she says to herself, I may be a Gentile, but I will still go to this great healer to seek healing for my child. And who can blame her? When we're desperate, we will do things that we never thought we would. So she goes to Jesus Christ. She approaches him and she begs, she begs Jesus Christ to heal her daughter. Jesus Christ replies with something that's, with a tone, with a a reply that's somewhat difficult to read. Jesus says, first, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's food and toss it to the dogs. And then she replies, Lord, 
Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then we're told, then Jesus told her, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. Jesus Christ tells her, you know what? You are not one of the children. In his, in initial, in his initial reply, he says, look, you want, look, lady, you're not Jewish. Let the Jewish people, let the children be eat their food first. Let them eat first. And then you may, we may look at you later. It's not right to take what belongs to the children and toss it to others, to dogs. I don't think Jesus Christ was calling her a dog. He was just using that to show the demarcation that exists between Jew and Gentile. But Jesus Christ also does something because she replies. She says, look, Lord, even the dogs under the, eat the crumbs that fall under the table. And she gets her healing based on that reply. And there are two things we can learn here. The first thing is this. The love of God has no boundaries. Jesus Christ heals the Gentile woman's daughter. He doesn't deprive her of that healing because of our nationality or our ethnicity. Jesus Christ knows, unlike the Pharisees and the others who would have resisted such a thing, Jesus Christ knows that we are all God's children. And when we come to God in faith, God does not look at our ethnicity. God does not look at boundaries. God heals. He answers the prayers of those who come to him in faith. So God's love knows no boundaries. And the second thing we learn is this. Humility goes a long way. This woman humbles herself. She is not proud. She doesn't say any kind of whatever it is to say, you know what, I, I demand that you heal my daughter. She makes no demands of Christ. All she does is beg. She pleads. And when Jesus Christ kind of almost seems as if he wants her to, he brushes her away. No, she comes back with a retort that forces his hand, that makes him say, you know what, I have to give you the healing, you give your daughter the healing you seek for her. So we know, we've learned those two things from this story. God's love has no boundaries and humility goes a way, long way in the kingdom of God. So who belongs in the kingdom of God? All of us. All of us. All of us. There is no uh, nationality, the boundaries. There's no age, no gender, no discrimination of any kind, of race, color, of any kind. We all belong in the kingdom of God. And we belong to the kingdom of God when we come to God in humility, when we acknowledge that we are nothing, that we are dust compared to God, when we know that we have no entitlement to the blessings that God bless, showers upon us. When we realize that, when we realize that humility, when we know that we have to be humble to get with God, then and only then can we receive the blessings of God. The truth is, a proud person cannot see God because they don't feel they need God. But sooner or later, when things happen, that their world of resources cannot um, solve, then they seek God. And only then do they know that, ah, you know what? I am in need of God. So God's kingdom belongs to you. God's belong kingdom belongs to me. All of us are welcome in the kingdom of God. The sacrifice of Christ is open to all who are willing to avail themselves of it. But we also need to be humble. We also need to be humble. The proud cannot inherit the kingdom of God. When we look to ourselves, when we feel that we are all that and we don't need God, 
we won't get anything from God. Christ seeks those who will be humble. Christ humbled himself when he took on human form. And in order to get anything from Christ, we ourselves need to be humble. And so that's what I want to leave all of us with today. God loves us. But we need to be humble before God in order to get anything from God. God loves us. But we need to develop humility, which goes a long way. Amen. It's now time for our prayers, and I will be leading our intercessions this morning. Let us pray. In the power of the Holy Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We praise you for your wonderful creation, which proclaims the work of your hands. Open our eyes, O Lord, to see how our actions damage your creation. Help us to be good and faithful stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
merciful God. You are slow to anger and of great kindness. We confess to you our sins, which separate us from you. Give us contrite hearts and grace to amend our sinful ways. Deliver us by your power from the bondage of sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. Look with mercy on the nations of the world and their leaders. We pray for righteousness and peace among the nations. And we pray especially, Lord God, this day for the people of Afghanistan. We pray for peace in Afghanistan. And Lord, we pray for all the nations of the world that you will break down the barriers of fear, hostility, racism, and misunderstanding that leads to violence and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have called us to be one body in Christ. Look with favour on your church and give to her leaders wisdom and discernment in their ministries. We pray especially for our Archbishops Justin and Stephen and our Bishops Sarah and Rob. We ask, Lord God, that you banish from your church any spirit that seeks compromise with the false values of the world. Empower your church to be the church you desire it to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you are our stronghold in times of trouble. We bring before you all who are burdened and oppressed. We ask, Lord God, that you comfort them and raise up helpers for them in their need. Give them, O Lord, the healing and peace which only you can provide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we ask you, we, you have asked us to be thankful in all things. We thank you for all the gifts that you freely bestow upon us. For life and health, for food to eat, for roofs of our heads, for friends and family, for power to work and leisure to rest. For all your blessings, O Lord God, we praise you and magnify your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thou be
wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us, give, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts
by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of her heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Thank you to the St. Martin's Voices for that lovely hymn. Praise to the holiest in the height. Now, just a couple of announcements before we go. Uh, the first is just to say that services, our service patterns change this month, from this month. Um, so from next, from next Sunday, we'll start having four services again, like we normally would have had before, prior to the pandemic. So we have the 8 a.m., the 9.30 a.m., the 11.15 a.m., and the 6.30 e.p.m. services. So we'll have those services every Sunday. We might have the odd day when we don't have all of them, but usually we'll have all four um, on, on a Sunday. So do please join us um, for any of those services, 8 a.m., uh, 9.30. The 9.30, the 8 a.m. is a normal BCP um, uh, Holy Communion service. The 9.30 service is our family service with the choir, traditional service with the choir. The 11.15 service is a family service, but with modern music, and it's more informal. And our evening prayer um, is um, at 6.30 p.m., which is, again, a traditional one. So you can join us for any one of those services um, that you wish, and we'll be glad to see you, and, hope to exp and we hope to see you uh, soon at any one of those services. Uh, so that's for those services. Uh, we continue to have our uh, COVID-19 safety measures in place. Uh, we'll review it later on this month. We want to see what the effect of the, of the school children going back to school will be on the, um, the, the um, rate of infection uh, for the, of, the, of the virus before we make a decision. Again, usually we'll, we, we, it, there's always an optic when school children go back, but that means everything's, everybody's up and running again. So we're just waiting to see what that's going to be like before we make a decision on um, what to do regarding the uh, current um, uh, safety measures that we have in place. But for now, we'll continue to social distance, sanitize hands, uh, have communion in one kind only, which is bread, and all the other things we've put in place. So do please bear with us. We're reviewing we're, we've, uh, we're committed to reviewing all these measures as soon as possible. And do please understand that we are doing this for safety reasons, for health, health and safety reasons, for your good and on and ours. So it's for everybody's good that we try and keep a safe space at St. Michael's. So do please bear with us. We will review uh, speedily. And as soon as we review them, we'll let you know what our decisions uh, are. Uh, so social distancing replay, it remains and all the other things, uh, measures remain in place for now. Uh, or the, our um, work, Wellness Cafe continues to grow from strength to strength. Uh, since we started this in June, we've, we've got lots of uh, people coming, lots of visitors. I think, up to, I think we had over 50 visitors on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, and about, over, about 33 on Tuesday. So we're really getting good numbers of people coming in, uh, which is really, really good. Uh, we're going to have an official launch of the Wellness Cafe on the seven, Tuesday, the 7th of September at 12 noon. So do please join us if you're able to. Everybody's welcome. Um, we're going to get some, um, so I think there's some of the, the um, Deputy Mayor of Camden, the CEO, Chief Executive of Camden Council, uh, we'll get some, a few other people, uh, our church wardens, if there are people over there. So do, do please join us if you can. It's, and it's just a great thing that we're doing in the community. Um, it's a great initiative in partnership with the Highgate Newtown Community Center, HNCC, and it's really taking off in ways that we're not expecting. And we expect it to continue to grow because it seems to see if when more people find out they're eager to come. And for us, it's really good. It's mission, and it's um, and these are people who are, wouldn't normally, who would not normally come to our church, who are coming in now, and we would love to see more of our church people there to welcome them in. Let's love them into the kingdom of God. Uh, again, a lot of them are non-Christians, but we show the love of Christ. If we show the love of Christ to them, you never know what the Spirit will do. So let's just keep doing our bit in reaching out to our community. So do please join us for the launch um, on the 7th of September, t uh, 12 noon, uh, Tuesday. Join us if you can. And again, if you're able to volunteer, just email me, 
my emails on the website uh, to let me know that you're able to volunteer in any way, shape or form. Uh, or if you're interested, email me and I'll call you or get back in touch with you to tell you what kind of uh, volunteers we need. So do please join us for that if you're able to. And just say thank you to everyone who contributed to this service. Thank you to the St. Martin's Voices. Thank you to Andy and Polly for singing. Thank you to Sophie as well for singing. Uh, thank you to Jessica Morell for reading so well. And thank you very much to all of you and especially to the also to the tech team for the uh, ways they continue to put these services together for us behind the scenes. Thank you very much indeed. And now for our blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Bye-bye and have a wonderful week. Bye.